thank you everyone uh, welcome we are going to talk about doing open banking with free and open source software solutions my name is andres de everyone i currently define myself as a an architect for banking solutions i've been a linux user for a very long time also i've been involved with the financial sector sector for a very long time uh, you can reach me at Twitter using my tag name, Cryptos. And by the way, the name Cryptos has nothing to do with cryptocurrencies. Actually, I started using it a very long time ago. And it was about uh, cryptography. Back in those days, uh, there was just the beginning of OpenSSH one and all that stuff and it was uh, fascinating for me i was on uh what thing in united states is uh college yes college ah by the way i haven't mentioned it i am from mexico so uh, bienvenidos to ustedes so let's go into what matters most for all and let's start talking about open banking let's start with an introduction about open banking uh, why should i care open banking isn't relatively old but isn't isn't not new really open banking has been around like for the last five to seven uh, years old years and well open banking is a standard note the air quotes to share financial financial information in a standardized and granular way also open banking allows you as a user what information and to whom you can share it and also and the most important thing about what information is being shared is that it's your information. You see? The information that is being shared by open banking is about your uh, accounts, what uh, credit score you might have with an institution, uh, balance, account balance, personal information, and obviously, this information you control who can access, but also the government could access this information in a more reliable and immediate way. How, as a user, I benefit about open banking? Well, think about this. You have a, a savings account in several banks and you don't have any way to have like a global idea of how much money you have in each of your accounts. Well, using open banking, you download an application to your cell phone and contact your bank with your identity and allow yourself to see your balance. Now, the application communicates with a set of APIs defined by the open banking and extract this information and present them and present it to you in a more structured or a more uh, concise in information. Also, this information could be used by the wallet to offer you tailored uh, offerings. Like uh, you like to go to the movie and uh, they can offer you some uh, ticket uh, tickets uh, discounts and so on. So the idea is that uh, open banking could benefit the user because allows to have a more to take more informed decisions about what to do with their own money, and also allow other te technologies like uh, artificial technology to help you in your money management. But to be honest, open banking as any standard has more than one standard. Right now, we have two main standards, the Nigerian Open Banking Standard 
and the UK Open Banking Standard. They are really, really very similar. And like any standard, and there is uh, the Bayan, the Banking Industry Architecture Network, who is uh, an organization in Germany who tries to be an ISO standard for open banking. It has it tries to embrace open banking and extend open banking in what Bayer calls the Bayan landscape. Actually, they are in the 9.1 version of the Bayan landscape. So we could expect in the near future that we will, we will have like three or four or more open banking industries. Why? Because this open banking is a regulatory requirement. What the, does this mean? Well, this means that banks must comply to have these features. If they do, they will get fined. So they are running into implementing open banking at a level that is accepted by the authorities. And authorities will review and force everyone to have this type of API. Actually, this uh, levels up a little bit the play field between fintech and traditional open banking. Fintech are not very well regulated. There are um, a sandbox model about uh, fintechs when they can uh, uh, they can make the business case to the government and they get a uh, temporary authorization. But uh, they are doing a lot of things that are not allowed by the traditional banks. So having this open banking to be in compliance for fintechs and normal banks allows to level a little bit this play field and uh, push our bankings to be more like a fintech and obviously makes the fintech to share information, um, products and uh, offerings with banking using these APIs. On the technical side, well, to be honest, open banking is just an API. Not very nice, but it's just an API. Actually, it's an arrestful API. You use operation get, post, delete, patch to a um, predefined API. Uh, the information about the API you can uh, check in the couple of URL that you're looking at the screen. There is a uh, wiki hosting adaptation and there is a GitHub for Open Banking UK. The majority of the bankings are implementing the UK standard because it's the most well documented. It has the more documentation, it has the more uh, level of uh, acceptance. And uh, you can uh, search a lot of information in these uh, sites, but you need to know, not a little, actually you need to know a lot about banking institutions to really understand the APIs. They are not easy to understand. They use terms like a TPP and, uh, and they focus mostly on savings and loans uh, offerings. Meanwhile, uh, FinTech is pushing now InsurTech and a lot of things. Open banking is a, is a little uh, late for that uh, type of, uh, of APIs, but you can uh, read it and get a grasp of the, of the app implementation. Obviously, the app implementation is oriented to, uh, to banking institutions. It has a, a high uh, level of uh, corporative orientation. It has uh, data government uh, principles. It has uh, a lot of security principles. It, uh, the, ba the authentications base for open banking is out or out to specifically. Um, in this way, you can uh, use any source of authentications. Uh, you could authenticate your bank using your Facebook account if you want. Not very recommendable. Um, it's not a, a suggestion, but the technology allows it. 
and uh, there are a lot of things that if you're not very familiar with the banking industry maybe you're going to have some difficulty uh, understanding them but keep reading the specification eventually you will get it and also open banking is not only for uh, banks maybe you are a retail store that could have a uh, uh some reputation score based on credit score for some type of process you could use the open banking information uh you are a human resource firm and you want to do a, a background credit score check you could use uh, available sources of, of information like fico and that or maybe you could ask the user just to share your banking information or also as a human resource uh, instead of having um, the risk of uh, giving you your pay in another uh, account that is not yours you just share your account with the uh, open banking allowing your contractor with, with the account you could obviously link this with QR and a lot of uh, available technologies okay so how can we implement open banking with a uh, free and open source software well as many of you are aware free and open source software many times does not uh, goes well with banks why because banks being a regulated institutions they tend to select uh, service providers service providers who can who can sue if they have a problem the service providers who can guarantee them they will comply with all the modifications that they, they are facing and when you are using free and open source software normally you don't have this type of uh, security but let's face it right now many of the open source uh, solutions that are provided by are sponsored by uh, corporate providers and we have like the closed source and the open source and actually that makes part of our decision matrix what are we are going to see in this decision matrix matrix well the, the decision matrix is like uh, three fundamental pillars of how to choose the tools uh, to make our open source implementations. We did it for you and we are going to present it uh, from now on. The decision matrix was really simple. Uh, all software selected should have a corporate sponsor so if everything goes right and the bank wants to upgrade their uh, chosen solution they can purchase some type of corporate support very important for cooperatives they uh, this make easier to create like a, a development uh, path where we can fail with the solution and uh, doesn't make so much heat because in the agile world if we fail we learn b it must be cloud native or at least it can be containerized why because there is a strong movement from the banking to the cloud there is like uh, about the 30 percent is uh, planning going to the cloud it's already on the cloud and up to 60% is planning to go uh, to the cloud and it must be open source why because in the end we are doing a proof of concept and if things go good if things go right we can upgrade our solution to a corporate solution by paying uh, software subscriptions like going from open source to SUSE, for example and if things go south and the technology really really like us and it has a justifiable business case, maybe we can sponsor that project and create a cooperative project but obviously to have these uh, capabilities we must be using open source 
So, what are they? So, what do we need to implement an open banking solution? Well, we need some type of perimeter security. We need API management to control who can access our API. We need a middleware associated with this uh, API who take the information and place it on uh, event queue, on event uh, enterprise service bus, and event uh, log, who is uh, consumed by microservices. What do we need? Well, for the start, we need some perimeter security who may, who, yeah. So, what do we need to implement open banking with free and open source solution? To start, we need some perimeter security. The perimeter security will protect our API manager and our API middleware. We will orchestrate our APIs and our process and uh, we will connect to an event log or to an enterprise service bus where the Microsoft web so what do we need well we need a solution for perimeter security well, so what do we need to implement open banking for a start, we need some perimeter security who protect our API manager and API middleware that will be orchestrated by uh, who. So, what do we need to implement open banking? Well, we need, for a start, a perimeter security who protects our API manager and our API middleware. These APIs can be structured in a workflow that need to be orchestrated the workflow obviously will deposit of the request and responses in an event log on a queue log and the queue will be consumed by microservices this is uh, each of uh, of these parts can be implemented using a sponsored uh, open source and right now we are going to see what are uh, the tools that we choose for example, for perimeter security, we choose Nginx. Nginx is an excellent load balancer. It has the F5 uh, sponsor, like corporate sponsors. We are going to use the mod security module from Spider Labs. And uh, Nginx or Nplus has their own uh, Windows application Windows. Engine X Plus has their own uh, WAF web application firewall, but both uh, the paid solution by N by F5 and the mod security use the lib mod security provided by the old WAF initiative. So both provide the same level of security, but you have like a corporate sponsor who is responsible that everything works okay on the side of F F5 and on the side of Nginx where you are on your own. Next, for the API stuff, API manager, API authentication, um, API configurations, we use a set of tools from WSO2. WSO2 specifically we use the API manager and the micro integrator. The API manager allows us to control who can access our API, how frequently, and even we can put some pricing over the, uh, that API. And the micro integrator is a tool to create APIs, it's a visual tool that we can see in the image on the right. I choose specifically this uh, solution because it allow it to showcase what we were doing to a higher level of administration directors and, and stuff like that because it's uh, the micro integrator is a drag and drop uh, application and actually WSO has their own open banking offering to uh, implement with their own tools but 
I don't like to be dependent on just one provider, so I just take the API uh, manager and the micro integrator and the API middleware and implement it. Now that I have uh, this uh, tool set of APIs, we need to orchestrate them. To orchestrate the solution, uh, I like Camunda. Camunda has a workflow processor who is based on VPML 2.0 and also has their open source and the corporate sponsoring for the solution. So you can start doing some the VPML design and uh, workflow process and as you grow and the uh, installations grows, you can switch to a paid uh, support and these guys are good and the solution is 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 great they have a way base uh, also they have a cloud-based solutions uh, that we can uh, terceraize uh, that uh, they have a cloud-based solution that we can maybe leverage some sort of uh, of work and let them do the heavy lifting and for a queue well, for IQ, I like Revit MEQ, mostly because it's lightning fast. Uh, it has, it's uh, resilient. Uh, it has like two main implementation, a standalone or a three node or five node clusters. And it's really easy to use. It has a web uh, interface who can be managed really easy and it just works. Maybe RabbitMQ doesn't comply with the requirements that I said earlier because RabbitMQ doesn't have a corporate sponsor. You can ask for corporate uh, a quotation for, for services from RabbitMQ. There are other partners. But to be honest, I don't like emu. Why? Because I don't like emu. I have post-traumatic emu disorder. So that's one of the reasons why I choose RabbitMQ over emu. But being uh, open or IMPQ, uh, the former uh, the real protocol that we the, the, would use, we can switch this component to whatever uh, component you like. And for microservices, to be honest, uh, microservices can be implemented with anything that you want, Python, Spring Boot, Node.js, PHP. Yes, PHP, PHP 8 is good enough, fair enough. I'd rather code the backend on PHP than on Node.js. That's just my opinion. But most of the work for corporate banking will be done on Java. Um, uh, some parts of uh, artificial intelligence will be done in in Python. And also, we have a set of additional tools like uh, MongoDB for non-structured data or for the event log. We provide some uh, process and some visibility to our architecture using Grafana. WSO can export uh, uh, indicators to Grafana. Uh, Grafana has Loki, who provides us an API with, uh, that we can use to uh, ingest some logs. And lately, we have been doing, we have been using Rootstack. Rootstack is a CDP, is a, a client data processors, which allow us to have a data entry not necessarily aligned with open banking. This allows you to be a bridge on the, the transformation from non-open banking solutions to open banking solutions and we can take the Rooterstacks library and embed them into the current solutions, uh, applications, uh, web applications, uh, Java, and get some data and start writing them and to keep uh, things as easier to manage as we could do. Ruderstack uh, has their own uh, 
proprietary uh, offering and the open source offering, but it's a, a nice uh, solution. But beware, not everything about open banking is nice and neat. There are a few warnings that we need to talk about. Like what? Well, as I said earlier, open banking has at least two recognizable standards, the UK standards and the Nigerian standards. But if you're working like me in uh, countries that are not neither UK or Nigeria, like me in Mexico, we have and not fully defined or implemented the standard. Uh, in the case of uh, Mexican legislation, the law only states that it should be used by a standardized API, but they never talk about what or which a standardized API. The market has decided upon uh, the, UK, the UK open uh, banking version, but it's not definitive. So, if you are outside UK or Nigerian uh, markets, uh, open banking will need some tropicalization. And this tropicalization should, uh, will need some tropi tropicalization. And this tropicalization will require to have some TOGAF abilities, to have uh, data governance and knowledge, to have uh, open data architecture knowledge, to comply with the philosophy of the open banking solutions. And to be honest, is not the easiest API to understand. Uh, there are some terms like PPP and uh, a lot of uh, short terms. Uh, there is a strong orientation of the open banking uh, API to manage uh, savings, uh, check and loan accounts and, and credit accounts. But uh, open banking is being used now by InsurTech and security uh, money transfer uh, companies, and they need to evolve. And uh, you need to understand uh, financials old terms, because uh, there are also new terms with the, the, the fintech. And uh, to be uh, aware of the compliance uh, regulatory that your market requires, uh, money laundry, anti-fraud prevention, and that type of stuff. Bien, we, we talk about it. Uh, Bien, like, tries to be a, a super open banking standard can be a good starting point because uh, BN in the latest uh, conception of the Bayern, the landscape, the Bayern landscape 9.1, in the newest book, they are offering uh, a roadmap, a migration roadmap, an implementation roadmap, who is uh, really useful and uh, provides us with guidance of what to do and how to do it. And also, we need to take in account that uh, most of the core banking applications, like uh, like uh, some banking uh, uh, T minus T twenty four, and uh, the commercial bank is the core banking application has their own open banking offerings because uh, they are re-implementing everything. And uh, the promise of open banking for the banking institution is to have a cordless solution where you can today be SAP, tomorrow you can be Oracle, and uh, maybe in a year or, uh, or so you have your own implementation. And these are like the main warnings that I can uh, give you about uh, open banking. So. Thank you very much for your attention and maybe you have some questions. Uh, I've been around the, the, the talk uh, all this time. Uh, maybe there are questions and feel free to ask it. I will try to give my best to answer your inquiries. Thank you very much.